So, praise God, good afternoon. Um, so I went over to get something to eat with Billy and then like I'm watching the thing like, okay, I gotta get back, I gotta get back, I gotta get back. And um, I see something about the goodness of God in what I can call trying times. Um, the goodness of God in trying times. Um, I want to talk about that a little bit today, and I want us to turn to Psalms 37, and let's go straight into the word, and I'm going to start reading in a few seconds, and give people a chance to get there, and then I'm just going to start reading. Psalms 37, I'm starting right at verse 1. I'm reading from the NIV. It says, do not fret because of those who do evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither and like the green plant, they will soon die away. In another translation, it's in, another, in another verse, it says, do not be jealous of people who seem to prosper in doing wrong because in the end they will wither away they will lose it all then it goes on and says trust in the lord and do good dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture take delight in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart I always do this, trust in the Lord. He'll give desires your heart, commit them to him, and he will bring them to pass, which is underneath. But I'm, I want to, like, just based on the way God showed to me in this season, I want to bring it home from a different direction, same direction, but different direction. Don't be envious of or don't be troubled by those who do wrong. Don't be envious of them. Don't let them trouble you. Don't let people who try to do evil around you or, or bring evil or cause evil to you don't let it bother you. It says, don't let it bother you because they soon will wither away. But listen to me. The key that I took caught from this to, you know, for this message is they'll wither away if you stop letting them bother you. Did you hear what I just said? They will wither away. She said, well, People do me wrong and I'm waiting and they seem like they ain't going nowhere like it's getting worse. Well, but it's because you're fretting because you're letting it bother you because you let it get in front of you. So when people are doing wrong to you and people are doing evil to you, and this is something I'm learning in this season and I can take it to heart and, and, and me and my baby girl was talking about it the other day and then it, all of a sudden it becomes bigger than life, it's right in your face, you can't see around it, it's all you can see. And so God said, it's not fading away because you're not paying attention to the instruction. Don't fret about it. Don't be envious of them and don't fret about it. Don't, don't let it get the best of you. If it's getting the best of you, pray for God to let you or help you let that go. Let them go. And sometimes letting them go means just let them go. Let them go about their business. Sometimes it means let it go and just have your own peace. Sometimes it means let them go. It's seasons of your life where people come and people go and people are there for a season and you think that they're supposed to be there forever. And God says, nope, 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 nope. There's a season that they're anointed to be there, like the cloud by day and the pillow fire by night, and it moves and you move with it. Let it go and keep going. So God said, the reason that you can't see the relief that you want to see, I'm talking about me now. He said, because you're fretting over what was done to you. You're fretting over how they treated you. You're fretting over the fact that they, didn't, they weren't right or they weren't fair. You're fretting over it. And he said, because you're fretting over it, it's not going away. They'll fade away. They'll soon wither and die away like a green plant if you stop feeding it. Hmm? See, it says like a green plant, they will soon die. Well, green plant won't die unless it's not watered. Let's pay attention to the analogies here. They're very straightforward. A green plant, when I said, I said, what do you mean like the green plant will die? The green plants don't all die. They won't die as long as you nourish them. But if you stop feeding them, they'll die. So listen to me. Stop fretting those who's done wrong. 
And how do you do it? Stop feeding it. And if you stop feeding it, it'll die. You know, I preach these messages to you that God's given to me that I'm working out right now in my own life. I'm not preaching it as one who's accomplished it or achieved it. I'm sharing it as I'm getting it, hoping that it will change your life as it's changing mine. So let's all just take a moment and say, I refuse to feed the thing that irks me. I refuse to feed the people who hurt me. I refuse to feed, I don't mean literally, if God tell you to give him some food, you could do that. I'm talking about feed the situation. I refuse to feed into it. I refuse to keep buying into it and letting it feed me. I want to stop talking about it. I want to stop rehearsing about it. I want to stop being and moaning about it. I refuse to let this thing live in me, especially when you know, well, I didn't do nothing wrong. And now and you really give, think that gives you a chance to keep feeding it. And I didn't even do nothing wrong. And, and, I, don't, and I don't feel I should be treated like that. And that wasn't even right. And I was trying to help. And God said to me, yeah, but you're still feeding it, though. Did that at least speak to somebody? Let's just, we're going to just stop feeding it in Jesus' name. I, I just stop for a minute and just pray for each and every one here listening who will watch. Father, we thank you right now for the strength. We talk about I'm going to walk in love. We talk about we're going to forgive. We say all these kind of words. But in our hearts, we still carry around the pain and we still nurse it and we feed it and we keep it alive. Help us to release. Help us to stop fretting. Help us to stop nourishing that thing that means us no good so that it may die away as exactly as you promised. And we will be patient and watch the manifestation that comes when we obey this word and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. So now you can trust in the Lord and do good and dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. So God said to me, I'm bringing you into the land. Stop bringing the stuff of yesterday into your new land. I'm bringing you into the land. Uh, you, you, can I talk a little bit? Stop bringing that stuff into your new land. If God is bringing you into a new land, he's promoting you. He's this on your job or whatever. And you still can think about what the person did on your last job or what the person, the people did to you when you was in the last position before you got promoted. You're like, you need to leave that. I'm taking you into the new land. Leave that stuff behind. Don't bring it with you. I know I'm, what I'm speaking right now is a very, very sensitive, but very real word. It's not the easiest word in the world, but it's the truest word, Right. We have to let go, forgetting those things which are behind. We press forward to the mark of the high calling. And this is why he said you, you got to go forward without carrying the baggage of yesterday. Say that. I go forward without carrying yesterday's baggage. Stop trying to squeeze in the clothes that don't fit you anymore. Bless somebody with them. Let them go. Give them up. Let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Well, I may lose weight. Then God will bless you with some new stuff from the seed you sowed. But let that mess go. Some of the stuff you don't need to fit again. It's out of style. It's out of date. Even if you lose weight, you shouldn't be wearing it. It just don't look right. Just let it go. And that's what God has been showing me. This stuff that you carry, it's, it's not even fashionable anymore for you. This is not even the era you're in. You can't fit that. Let it go. Move on with your life. Let it go. That was the message last week. Get up. Now we letting go. All right. <laughs> this is, we, you know what I'm saying? Get up and we letting go. This is, that's not the title, but stay with me. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and trust in him, and he will do this. Now, in the Amplified, and the King just says, and he will bring it to pass. He will, he, will, he will make it a reality. Lindsay said something this week that was very, got me really, really thinking, and God used part of that to give birth to this. She said, you know, I've learned to listen, and you correct me if I'm saying this wrong. 
God told me I've learned to listen to the word and listen to him and then go do what I want to do. But I have to learn. God told me you got to listen for me, not just listen to me, but listen for me in that circumstance and situation. There's a specific instruction. And maybe that's not what you were trying to say, but that's how it spoke to me. So I'm going to say, listen for him after you listen to him, then be still and listen for him, for the instruction now that he will give you to begin to walk down that path. When he says, be still, I want to be still. But then I got to listen for him and exactly how he wants me to be still and where he wants me to be still at. Be still right here. No, move 10 feet over. Now be still. Be still right there in the right place. I need you to listen for me as well as listen to me. So when he said, trust in the Lord, he will speak desire to your heart. Then you got to listen. Yeah, yeah, I took the stuff, sis. And then, and then you got to listen to him. And then when he gives you the instruction to be still, then I got to listen for him to tell me exactly how he wants me to be still and where he wants me to be still and on what day of the week he wants me to be still. See, all of this stuff, my God, begin to open this up. Trust in the Lord. He will give me the desires of the heart. Commit it to him. What does that mean? Listen for him. He gave me the desire. I listened to him. He gave me the desire. And now... I'm going to commit it to him and listen for him to guide me down the path that I need to go with this new instruction. New instruction, I want you to write this down. New instruction requires new direction. New instruction requires new direction. Well, God, you're telling me to do this now. Well, I might before I can do that have to go back to class and take a few more classes to un un know how to execute that new instruction. I use, I use Devon on, on this one for an example. You work in lighting, you work in theater, you work in setting up stuff and make sure things are right. And somebody comes and says, okay, now we're doing, I'm just make up something, gotta know. It. We're, we're now doing a halogen super glow setup. That's the new instruction. Well. I'm going to need some direction now. First of all, I don't even know what that is. Second of all, I don't know how it works. Does it plug in? Does it run off a battery pack? Is it a recharge? Like, I need to know now how this new thing works. You can't just throw something at me and say, do it, and then expect me to do it without new direction. So when God starts to instruct you in this new path and this new time in your life, there's an instruction that... I'm, I'm, I'm picking on the shepherds today that Ruth could walk in when she was believing God and trusting God for a husband. Now you got a husband. Now you need some new direction because you can't live the single way anymore. You got to live the way you live to deal with somebody else who wants half of your attention and half of your space and to put his stuff down where you like to put yours and vice versa. You know, it's a different thing now. Now you got a baby. Praise God. Well, now that's another new set of instructions. How to be a mother. How to raise. See, I'm trying to make this point strong. We walk with God and we keep asking God to bless us and open up this avenue and this door and this thing and this new thing. But we don't sit down and listen for him to give us the instruction on how to do the stuff he's doing in our life right now and at this season. So we get the stuff and it sits there in the box. I don't know if you ever went shopping and bought a bunch of stuff or, or bought a new this or new that. You know you really need it or you probably need it, but you never took the time to know how to use it and it just sit in the box. Or, <laughs> or here's my thing, right? And I noticed it recently. Every time the new iPhone, whatever, comes, I update it, right? It says update it, I update it. It's probably like 50 new features. I don't know what it does. I, I, it could make my life a whole bunch easier in a whole bunch of different ways. Some of the stuff I find by accident, I touch the screen, I'm like, oh, shoot, I didn't know it does that, right? Because I didn't take the time to get the instruction to know how to use what was now given to me. I just upped it. It was there to take. I just took it, okay? But now you have to learn how to work it well. In this season of your life, God is calling all of us to a new level. That means he needs us to stop fretting over what's old. He needs us to leave behind the stuff and stop feeding it so it can die. He wants to move us into a new direction. And he said, and in that new direction, I want you to listen to me 
for the direction, but then you got to let me purpose you and prepare you for where I'm taking you. You have to go back to school. You have to sit still. You got to be still. And you got to let me begin to show you how to use the new goods that I've given you. You listening to me? So let's bring it on now. Trust in the Lord. and He will give you the instruction, the direction, the desire of your heart. Instruction. Committed to him. Trust in him and he will do this. He, the other scripture verse, the other translation says, he will bring it to pass. He will make your, your righteousness reward shine like the dawn and your vindication like the noonday sun. And that was the one, I don't see Lima right now, but there it is. Your, your, your vindication like the new day sun. Check this out. Listen close. Because me and I had a nice talk yesterday. Watch this. This is what God showed me. He said, your vindication. Don't make a difference what they said. Don't make a difference what they did. Don't make a difference how they did it, how they twisted it, how they tried to do you harm, how they tried to bring it at you, bring it against you, bring it towards you. God said, I'll make your vindication shine. This is the thing that spoke to me as we, what we saw about yesterday. We ain't got to prove ourselves right. We ain't got to prove ourselves nothing. God said, I'll make your vindication shine. Trust in me. Give it to me. Let me have it. And I will bring the vindication. I will make it shine. I will make it obvious that those who come against you is on them and not on you. Nellie and I were talking um, and she was talking about, you know, just how she feels about the way she can be treated at times by people. And I said, but you can rest in one thing. If you know that you're not responsible for the treatment you're getting, or you're not doing anything to create that, then based on this, you're vindicated. God will vindicate you. you. You have nothing to do at that point. You listen to me. You know people that just unprovoked, they can be a certain way to you. Why are you concerned about fixing it? If you had nothing to do with it being. Don't fret about those who are evil or be envious of those who seem to prosper in doing wrong. Don't worry about it. Because we go back to this verse, five, because he will make your righteous, your righteous reward shine like the dawn and your vindication shine like the new day sun. So he's saying, I'll vindicate you, but you can't carry it. You can't fix it. You can't try to solve it. How many apologies do you need to give before they accept it? How many times you got to keep checking yourself to see if it's you, unless God told you it's you. If God told you specifically it's you, then okay. If not, you don't need to keep trying to convince people that I didn't mean it. And I didn't mean it that way. I don't think you understood me. You don't owe anybody that. Are you understanding me? Are you understanding me? Give me a thumbs up or amen or something. You don't owe everybody your heart. You don't owe them that. If you offered it and it's not received, then you're good. And if you did, and if God tells you to offer it again, then offer it again. But if not, you're free. Do not live any further with the pain, again, I'm speaking to myself, and the hurt that somebody else inflicted on you, thinking that you got to keep trying to figure out how to make it right, because after all, you're the Christian in the matter. You're free right now. I'm telling you to be free. You don't owe anybody. You don't owe anybody um, your love. You don't owe anybody your attention. You don't owe anybody your you don't owe them that. You don't owe them that. You owe them only one thing and one thing only, to love them. I'm trying to love them in your heart, not going up to them, kissing their behind and trying to beg them over and over again to love you and forgive you. No. In your heart before God, that's the love you owe them. Owe no man nothing but to love them. In your heart, 
Don't tell me, well, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to, I'm just going to pray and I'm just going to walk in love with you. You shouldn't have to say that to me. Just you and God do that. Let that, let that go down between you and God. I don't need to hear nothing about it. Keep that, keep, keep that ish to yourself. Like keep that, like some things, TMI, keep that over there. Like I, we don't need all of that. You go do that with God and let God re re reveal that to me. Let God vindicate. So here's my thing. Don't fret over those who do evil. Don't be envious over those who seem to prosper in their way. Don't water the plant and keep it alive. Trust in the Lord and you do good. And you'll dwell in the, in, in the land and enjoy it safe. Mean protected. He'll protect you. All of this is about protection. I always thought about me surrendering so God can do. But he's saying it's more than that. He said there's protection and then take delight in me and I will give you desires in your heart. And then you commit it to me and trust in me and I will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and I will vindicate you. Does anybody here not know what vindication is? Okay, good. That means you were accused of the crime and you were found not guilty. You were vindicated. Hmm. Let's, let's wrap this up. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently on him. You see how all this ties into the first verse. We'll keep going. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways or when they carry out their wicked schemes. Do not fret when people seem like they're succeeding and bringing forth allegation or, or, or pointing fingers or stealing or, or cheating you, say, don't fret about it. Don't fret when they seem to succeed in their ways or they just do wicked stuff and they seem they, I don't know, they seem like they're doing well, they, they're stealing, they're, they're selling drugs. He said, don't, don't, get, don't get caught up in that. Refrain from anger, turn from wrath, do not fret. It only leads to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Let's bring it back home. Be still. Stop drumming it up. Stop watering it. Don't fret about the evil done to you, around you, about you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Commit your way to the Lord. Not to them, to him. Trust in him and he will do it. Let's go with, let's make sure you heard that again. Trust in him and he will do it. What? Make you not fret or be anxious or worry about those who do wrong. Commit your way to the Lord. Commit your situation to the Lord. Commit what you go through to the Lord. Commit to your instruction and direction to the Lord. Commit it all to the Lord and he will do it. He will will make you a righteous reward, shine like the dawn, and he will vindicate you. And that will shine, means for everybody to see, like the noonday. But, verse 7, be still before the Lord. Listen to him, listen for him. Be still, wait patiently. Listen to him, listen for him. Be still, wait patiently. Do not fret while you're waiting if other people who are not waiting seem to be succeeding. Did you catch that? Those who are running around anxiously trying to do it all in their own power look like they're getting there and you're not. Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. And do not fret when people seem to not be doing that and succeeding in their own ways. For when they carry out their wicked schemes, don't worry about that. Don't get angry. Refrain from anger. Verse 8. Turn away from wrath. Am I speaking to y'all? You know when you think I'm doing better than this person's doing and look like they're doing okay. You know you want to get angry. You want to have access. Turn away from it. Refrain from wrath. Turn away from anger. And once again, don't fret. Why? Because it leads you to doing evil. Let's talk about that a little bit.
to bring it home. Come on. Because it only leads to evil. He said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, the Lord said, well, first, once you get angry, you're already moving out of my spirit. You're in the flesh. Then you start to fret. You start to worry about it. Then you start to doubt once you start to fret because you start to think now and it ain't going to happen for me and it's happening for them. And so you're going to keep on picking at it and picking at the scab and picking at the scab and wondering why not me and why didn't that? And God said, it only leads to evil. Whatever is not a faith is sin. It only leads to doubt. It only leads to you starting to act like them or wish you were them or thinking maybe you should do what they do to get what they got. Come on now. I'm trying to talk to you. I hope you're getting it. Refrain from wrath or anger. Don't worry. It only leads to doing that same evil yourself. For those who do evil will be destroyed. Here's the hint. This is where I'm going to read it one more time. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Don't fret. Don't be angry. Don't get into anger turns to wrath. Wrath turns to you fretting. It leads to you doing evil. For those who do evil will be destroyed. He said, don't join them. Simply put, don't join them. There's an outcome for them. It describes it in the top. And he describes it again. Their outcome is going to be destroyed. Now you getting upset and you fretting and you worried about how they act and how they treating you, how that ain't right and this and that. He said it's only going to get you off into anger. It's going to get you fretting. It's going to get you bitter. And all of a sudden, you're going to find yourself in an evil place, inheriting what they're about to inherit for what they did to you, around you, or about you. Now you putting yourself, you letting them put you into a place that you can reap their wrath with them. Stay out. Put the sucker in reverse and pull back. But they keep doing stuff. Let the Lord handle it. Leave it alone. Because the more you keep messing with it, the more upset you get. And am I telling the truth? God, show me the more you're talking about it. You, you know, you're starting out first. I'm just so hurt. I can't believe they did that. Then the hurt. Then it starts to become fretting. Then all of a sudden you start becoming angry. Then you start becoming bitter. Now I'm, I'm going to get them. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get them back. And all of a sudden now, even if you're never going to do it because your spirit won't let you, you're carrying it all inside yourself. You're playing it out in imaginary, giving them imaginary beat down 24 hours a day every time you think about it. And it's all up in your spirit, all this rage and anger and stuff that you can't even let out, which really sucks. Because you know God ain't going to let you go beat them, right? Or go shoot them or any of those thoughts you're having, right? Or push them down the flight of stairs, whatever thoughts are going through your mind. Who knows what you're thinking? My point is, you know you're not going to do that. So now you're just going to keep rehearsing it inside yourself over and over and over. And now you have become as evil as them in your own way. Don't bring their wrath on yourself. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah, I'm speaking to myself. Let it go. Just set the N-words free. Let them go. Whatever color N-words they are, just let them go. And this is what God is showing me. He said, you know, I got a destiny for you. And when you let them start to put their poison in your destiny, their job is to poison you and to poison your destiny. Let it go. Let it go. If God has showed you you outgrown them, let it go. God gave me a revelation. He said, you know, there's, there's an, an appointed leave. There's an appointed end. And I was like, pointed in. He said, there's a time in your life with certain people that you're ordained. It's an ordained end. It's an, or it's an ordained lead. It's over. It's ordained to be over. It's, it's over. And that role of that person in your life or that situation, or that circumstance, it's over. And God said, don't fret. Don't worry about it. Don't try to justify it. Don't try to explain it. It's just what it is. Now go forward. Don't fret. Don't worry. Don't be anger. Don't get into wrath. It only turns to evil. It only leads you into evil. And if those who are, those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Listen, be an inheritor. 
Don't be a participant in the evil. Stay on the inheritor side. I don't want to be a part of the participation of those who are going to reap even the evil they sold to me. I don't want to let them put me into a place that I'm now a candidate for wrath with them. Did you hear what I just said? I'm bringing, this is it, so hear me out. I'm praying for you, for me, for all of us, that even those who the enemy has raised up to wrong us or to do us harm, that we don't allow them to get us to the place where we fret, where we get in anger and we find ourselves fretting, bitter, angry, find ourselves in the same place as them, about to incur the same wrath that they're going to incur, even though they started it to you. It doesn't matter who started it. Sometimes this is an ordained end. And when that ordained ends, you move your way. I don't care who they are or what they are. Yeah, but you know, they're my family and my friends. They've been with me for years. They, 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 they. Who are my mother and brother? And Jesus said, those who hear the word of the, my father and do it, them and them only are my friends. I'm not saying they do it or they don't do the word of God. I'm saying, though, if your season in your time and their life is over, you can't help them no more. No matter how much you try, no matter how much you try to convince them that you can't help them. And if their season in your life is over, all they're going to do is bring misery to your life. Let it go. It's not just about saying, I forgive them. So don't feed them. Don't feed it. Don't feed it. Don't feed into them. Don't feed into it. How many of you receive what's being said right here, right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody here. And I see almost every hand went up. I pray that we are free. We're free. We're going to let it alone. We're not going to wish harm, but we're not going to let it continue to be our situation or our circumstance. I pray over everybody here. Right now, I know all of us have a situation like that. There's not a person here that's exempt from that. But we choose today to walk in this new wisdom where we seek you, we commit it to you, we choose not to fret, not to worry, and not to focus. And now we ask you to work in us both and to do will and to do your good pleasure because in our own strength, we, we only know how to do it one way. But in you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We choose to forgive, to let go, to release, and to walk away from everyone and anything that has tried to bring us harm or, 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 or disease. And God showed me that. He said, disease is not just sickness in your body. It's dis-ease. It's the lack of ease. It's dis-ease. And spiritual disease is no different than physical disease. And most of the time, it's not spiritual. So I speak right now, Father, that we're free from the spirit of disease. We free from the spirit of heaviness and weight. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. We're going forward. We're moving forward. We're letting it die. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.